In this video, I'm going to talk about using modes with Habitat. Now, what are modes? It's a nice alternative to geofencing. I do already have the Ecobee sensors placed throughout the home, so instead of using geofencing, this is a great way for me to keep the comfort conditions of the temperature, whatever lights or settings I want, related to my occupancy or whether or not I'm choosing to go to bed and cool off the house. So to do this, you're going to need a Habitat set up inside your home and you're going to need some kind of a motion sensor. Now the way that I've decided to set these things up is there's a couple of different variables but I'll go through uh, setting this up on your device. Bear with me while I quickly set up the screen recording that I forgot to do earlier. <laughs> All right screen recording is up here. So to start out you log into your Habitat device. Click on your Habitat at the top to the Access Hub Settings screen or give you options to, or access to this. Optionally, you can also go to the Settings tab on the left side. Once you get into here, Habitat calls this Modes and you can name these things whatever you like. For the three comfort settings I've decided to go with here, I'm going to go with Home, Sleep and Away. Uh, I might add another one here later on for like an evening, kind of like a cool off or a relaxed time period when I'm sitting back there watching some TV, hanging out with the boss. We'll see. Anyway, name your modes whatever you like uh, or what, whatever you want them to be. And once you have your modes set up, then we can go into the apps section. And I've got rules that are setting my occupancy mode. So here you can see the set occupancy mode. And here's kind of the variables that I have setting the occupancy. So, so the trigger event for this that's going to cause this script to run uh, anytime I've got any motion inside my bedroom, my plant room, my theater room, or the main floor, if any of those has changed, or optionally, uh, bedroom light switch has changed. Now this isn't a light switch for the light inside the bedroom, it's actually for the ceiling fan. And we like a little bit of circulation while we're sleeping, so that's what that is. So anytime that is on, I know we're trying to sleep. So that's why that's in there as a trigger. So if that bedroom switch is on, then the mode is set to sleep, and if the if there's motion on any of the other ones, I know somebody is at home. And the last one, if there's no motion and the bedroom switch is off, then I can set the mode to away. So that's the way I have it set up to set the occupancy and set the mode for it. And this, all this does is just sets the mode. It doesn't actually control anything yet. So I've done it this way because I wanted to do two rules to set up what I want to control. This way I can easily add stuff later on. Now I've actually moved the thermostat control away from my Ecobee onto the automation. I decided initially to test this and I found that it, the house is much more comfortable because it actually really closely matches what you're doing. The only change that I might need to, to make to this to make it even better is kind of like a cool off period later on in the evening. Uh, let the temperature back off a little bit, uh, kind of preparing for sleep because I do find right when you lay down to go to bed, it's a little warm for about the first hour. Anyway, that's later on. The gist of how you set this up is still going to be the same. So the uh, trigger events here, anytime the mode changes, becomes home sleeper away, that's going to trigger this to run. And if the mode is sleep, then this is what I want executed. So I've got the thermostat on my main home unit changing to 20. Uh, this is degrees Celsius. And the kitchen floor heat, uh, that's the tile floor heat, goes down a little bit. And the basement bathroom heat also goes down a degree. Now I can automate and put whatever I want in here. If I want to turn light switches on or off based on there being motion in the house, this is something I can easily do as well. And I've thought of incorporating my outside lights to this. I haven't totally decided what I all want to add, but the gist of it's all going to be the same. Nothing will change there. Then if I'm uh, home and actively doing stuff in the house, we can see we run the temperature a little bit warmer and the heat goes up in the kitchen uh, floor heat. And this doesn't take long for it to come up. This is maybe about 15, 20 minutes. So it's, it's easily tolerable. And the uh, basement bathroom floor heat goes up a degree as well. I initially had the, uh, in my sleep settings, had the bathroom heat turned down to 24 degrees and I found this one took too long. There's a thicker slab of concrete in the bathroom in the shower area. So I found this took too long to heat up for the time that I want to, or by the time I want to use it. So I've decided to actually change this around and keep it a little bit warm in there as well. Nothing like having a warm shower floor. Obviously with uh, any of these things, you can change these settings to whatever you want them to be to work out for your situation. Now the gist of all of this is you can do whatever you want with this. Now instead of geofencing, I kind of experimented with a little bit and I didn't like the geofencing at all. Because I already had the motion sensors inside my home, I found this was a really great way to quickly 
set this up and so far I've been very pleased with this, more pleased than setting us a, a preset schedule on the uh, thermostat I was running. Now the reason for this is quite simple actually because mine and my wife's routine changes pretty dramatically. So having this thing actually adapt and automatically do whatever it's supposed to do when we are doing whatever we're doing, blah blah blah. If we stay up late, watch a movie, and we both don't have work the next day, for example, like a long weekend, we don't have to continually keep manually overriding something to have the house comfortable to where we want it to be. So I think this is a better setup overall. I might have to build in, like I said, some more variables to get this set up to be exactly what I want, but already it's better than what I had currently set up before running it off the thermostat. If you're considering buying a Hubitat, uh, make sure that you check out this video uh, on the review before you do so to give you all the information you need before you make the decision to make sure it's the best fit for you.